Welcome back to Math for Game Developers. And because I, I missed a week, because I missed a week, I was at a conference, I was at GDC. So I'm going to make it up to you guys, and I'm going to do something a little cool this week. We're going to look at the problem of how to play a bullet whiz as a, as a bullet goes past the player. It goes pew! And you want to play that sound so that the player knows they're being shot at. So what we need is if this P, if this point P is the the position of the player, and this vector A is the trajectory that the bullet travels along. And so we want the closest point on A to P. We want this point right here. And that is going to be the point that we play our bullet with sound from. So let's draw something else we know. We know this vector, this vector right here, that points from the starting position of the bullet to the player's position. We can figure that out pretty easily and we'll call it B. And what we're going to do is we're going to take B and we're going to project it onto A. We're going to get the component of B that goes along A. And I'm going to call that B prime. And that's going to be this distance right here. And if you'll notice, you have this, you have a third vector. You have this vector right here. This is like the 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 difference. After we did our projection, what did we remove from B in order to get B prime? And that's going to be E. It's like an error vector. Uh, I can draw that neater E. So, uh, we can notice a few things. Oh, and this is this is all called projection. Projection. So that's what we're doing this week. We're going to do projection in order to solve this bullet whiz problem. So, there's a few neat things that that we can observe. First of all is that b prime plus e equals b. So, let's see. b prime plus e equals the original b. You'll notice this is, the, this is the vector b prime and it ends right here, and this is the vector e, and it comes up here. If you add these two vectors together, you just get b. And the other interesting thing is that this vector e and the original vector a are perpendicular. They form a right angle, a 90 degree angle, which is really important because it has to be perpendicular in order for this point to be the closest, the nearest point on A to P. So here's how I'm going to write that. Um, and I'm going to introduce a dot product. B, no, let's use, a, let's use A dot product with E equals zero. Now, if you need a little review on dot product, I'm giving you a link right here. I highly recommend you go back to the previous dot product video where we discuss the backstabbing and watch that. And if you remember, two vectors that are perpendicular to each other, their dot products will be zero. So the dot product of A and E is zero. Great, so there's only one more thing that we need, and that is to observe that this vector B prime is just a multiple of the, is, is just a scaled version of the vector A. So we can say that, we can say that, let's get uh, one more red right here. I'm gonna squeeze it up here. B prime is just some scale value x times a. So if I take a and I multiply it by x, then I'll get B prime. So really it's this x value right here that we want to find. Because if we know that, then we can just multiply a times that x and we'll get B prime, which is what we want. So uh, with these three formulas, we should be able to figure out B prime. So let's get started. First I'm going to go back to blue. I'm going to rearrange this equation a little bit. I'm going to subtract B prime from both sides so that we solve for E. We're going to get B minus B prime. And then I'm going to substitute this back into this equation. This E right here I'm going to, I'm going to substitute. So we're going to get A dot product with B minus b prime equals still zero. 
And now this B right here, I am also going to substitute in for this B. And we'll get A dot product with B minus X times A equals zero. So now we have an equation with X, which is our unknown, is what we want. And it's the only other things in here are things that we know. We know B, we know A. And all we have is A, B, and A. So great, now all we have to do is solve for X. Let's do it. We can, this is just, this dot product is, works just like multiplication. We can distribute. So we're gonna distribute this A. We're gonna get A dot B uh, minus, and then we're gonna distribute this A over here, A dot X A equals zero. This x I can actually pull out. It's like a coefficient of a of a polynomial. I can actually pull it out right here. So let's rewrite that a dot b minus x a dot a equals zero. And now finally, I'm going to add uh, this term to the other side. So we get a dot b equals x a dot a. And there's only one thing left to do now, which is uh, we almost have x alone. If we divide both sides by a dot a, divide both sides by a dot a, then these a dot a's cancel out, and you get x equals a dot b over a dot a. Cool. Now we can take this x and substitute it into our original equation up here, remember? And that will give us b prime equals a dot b over a dot a times a. So that is the equation for projecting b onto a, a dot b over a dot a times a. Now let's go back to the original definition of the of the dot product and see and see why this makes sense. A dot B, if you remember from the previous video, that's the length of A times the length of B times a cosine of the theta, which is the angle between the two vectors. And in our graph, theta is going to be right here. There it is. So I'm going to take this and substitute it into this equation we have right here. We'll see what we get. B prime equals a dot b, well that's just length of a times length of b cosine of this theta right here. And then we'll divide that by a dot a is going to be, well, the length of a times the length of a again. Cosine, cosine what? What is this? a and a, they're the same vector, so the angle between them is just zero, right? So this is going to be cosine zero and then times times a. So cosine zero, that's just one, right? And these a's are gonna cancel out. We have a length of a in the top and a length of a on the bottom. So now we're gonna get length of b cosine theta over length of a times a, times the vector a. So <clears throat> this is a this is interesting. Length of b times cosine theta. If you remember your trig class, that will give you this length right here, the length of b prime, because the x <clears throat> x is cosine, cosine is x. If you remember all that stuff, so cosine theta times length of b will get you this value right here, the length of b prime. So I'm going to rewrite that as length of b prime over time, times a, I'm going to move this a up in, into the numerator, times the length, I'm sorry, divided by the length of a. Now a divided by the length of a, if you remember, will give us a unit vector in the direction of a. And when you multiply that unit vector times the length of b, you'll get a vector in the direction of a that is the length of b prime which is what we want. So this makes sense in two different ways. Amazing. So 
Uh, I'm not gonna implement this video in the code. I'm gonna leave that to you. I think you have all the tools you need because I wanna go on to the next video, which is gonna be uh, learning how to billboard a sprite, and then I'll use some more cross products, and uh, we'll learn about basis vectors. So I'm really looking forward to it. See you there.